I'm Malice Campbell, I'm in the Circus Tavern, which is one of George Best's favourite uh, watering holes. I've left the Tory conference, thank God, and I'm now in this pub alongside a man very well known for enjoying a fag and a pint, UKIP leader Nigel Farage. Now, Nigel, I have been campaigning for alcohol concern to try to persuade the Tories, in particular Cameron, who's done a huge turn on this, to revisit the idea of minimum unit pricing. What do you reckon about minimum unit pricing? And what do you reckon generally about the extent to which alcohol is now a massive problem in Britain? A bit for two you know, somewhat separate questions. Uh, I have to say, you can't have minimum pricing on alcohol per unit. The European Union won't allow it. Um, and of course, that gets back to everything, doesn't it? We can't make our own decisions on most things. Is it a good idea? Well, the trouble is, uh, those that will hit and hurt most of the poorest, um, what you're likely to do is make anything too expensive and lead to a black market. I mean, take a hand rolling tobacco. 80% of the hand rolling market is now illegal tobacco. Mm -hmm. Look at drugs, look at illegal drugs, absolute epidemic of them all over the country. So I'm not convinced that's the right way to approach alcohol. Is there a mega problem with alcohol in this country? Yes, it's getting worse. Okay. It's getting far well, worse. First of all, on the, the point about the punishing the poor, in the countries where they've done it, it's been shown that the top end will end up paying a greater proportion of the extra that is charged by minimum unit price. And what's more, that the states, those states where it's been done, particularly British Columbia and the Russians who've had a massive impact on this, they've ended up saving money because of the, the same cost of the exchequer. And also, why would Britain not be able to legislate on its own for minimum unit pricing, as the Scots are about to do? Well, the Scots are about to do it, but they're going to be challenged. They may be challenged, but it doesn't mean they're losing. They're going to be challenged. I don't think I'm a single market rule we can do it. But that's perhaps not really the point of this. Um, I just feel, if you take some, some of those Scandinavian countries in Russia, um, Russia's had fantastic success in doing Scandinavia is fascinating. I mean, people just, people just distill their own alcohol now. They don't bother to go and buy it uh, with all the risks that go with that. So I, I don't think it's for the state through pricing to try and change behaviour. I think it is for the state and for the education system uh, and for all of us through education to change how we behave. I mean, I'm a drinker, there's no great secret about that. Um, when I was younger, I drank far too much. I'm one of the lucky ones that's come out the other end and I can control it. The epidemic problem we've got is we've got you know, kids of 18, 19, 20, 21 going out every Friday and Saturday, going out with the intention of getting hammered. And that's become the culture. And that's not just that, you know, the unemployed and those with no hope. That's amongst our bright university kids too. appear to be the country in Europe, you, you're very, very anti-European, but actually don't you think we can learn a huge amount from the way that the continental Europeans drink? Oh no, I'm pro-European, I'm the european Union, they're two entirely different things. Do you know, sometimes, if we go out into Flemish towns, Ghent, Bruges, Ypres, places like that, and you can go out, you know, I'm nearly 50, so I'd be looked upon as being almost a fossil by the youngsters, so you go into a bar with a group of young Flems on a Friday or Saturday night, there's no intimidation, there's no swearing, there's no punishment, no one's sick, the girls all feel safe, there's a huge amount we can learn, the question is, how do we do it? Right, so what's your answer to that? Because at the moment, uh, Cameron having dumped his own alcohol strategy, there is no alcohol strategy, but the government does not have an alcohol strategy. So what would you do were you in charge to, to combat the extent of alcohol abuse that we've heard of? We have to lead by example, we have to show people uh, that if you at a young age you know, get hooked on taking alcohol in excessive quantities on Friday and Saturday nights or more regularly than that, your chance in life of succeeding in work uh, or having a stable marriage or happy family life are diminished. I can't see any other way around it, but I don't think uh, putting up the unit price of alcohol is really the solution. What about, here we are in one of George's best pubs, what about the fact that, for example, the Russians and the French have banned the use of uh, alcohol companies in marketing and sponsorship and sport? I think that might be something we could do. Well, we did this with tobacco, didn't we? I mean, you know, 40 years ago we stopped TV advertising for cigarettes, then it was cigars. And that's been good. That's been, um, that's been well, there's, there's certainly been a, a, a reduction in the amount of people smoke, uh, whether it's because... And a reduction in the cost of the state of treating the colon cancer or other illnesses. Oh, I'd be careful on that. I mean, if it costs two billion a year to treat smoking... Uh, related illnesses, uh, the, the income for the exchequer is about 12 billion, so I'm not sure that argument really works. Um, I, it may be uh, that a de-glamorising of alcohol, and you could argue that advertising does glamorise things, you could argue that may help, uh, but these are all small steps. We have a massive cultural problem. I don't think we're going to... We're not going to have a moment, with, At the moment, when you talk about education, the education policy on, on, on alcohol is left to the, the alcohol companies. Drink aware, drink responsibly and all that stuff. I mean, there's nothing. Alcohol 
companies aren't breaking the law, they're entitled to break their products. Why would they want to educate people to educate people to drink less? Surely the government well, has to do that. No, I'm talking about education, I mean schools. Right. I mean schools, um, but given how badly we fail with illegal drugs, given that they are now endemic, you know, not just here in Manchester, but we, you know, we could go to a small village on the country. But there are more alcoholics in Britain than there are drug addicts by a huge factor. There are 1.6 million dependent drinkers and 110,000 in really serious drug addicts. Yeah, and that's about accessibility, isn't it? You know, we live in a society where alcohol is freely available. We live in a society where we associate... Would you, would you restrict the market? Would you restrict availability? Should it be sold in supermarkets? Should it be sold in garages, for God's sake? I must say, I, sometimes, I go into a garage on a Friday night, I'm shocked that they're all queuing up to buy a cider and lager for 28 pounds or whatever it is. Um, and so I understand the basis of your concern, uh, but, but do I want to leave in a society that wants to legislate what we do and don't do? I mean, I'm a big opponent of the smoking ban, uh, which has closed down lots of pubs. Now, you know, you can argue uh, that, that, that the state can change people's behaviour. I'm not convinced that it can. Yeah. Do you think as a political leader that you sitting here with me in a pub at lunchtime having a pint, and you also, that you you know, that the bloke you'd have a drink, you market yourself as the kind of bloke that you'd like to have a drink with in a pub, is that irresponsible? Do you feel that actually that promotes a bad image about alcohol and politics? No, no, no I don't. I think alcohol is like nationalism. Small amounts of it make us all feel happier, <laughs> make the world a better place, and too much of it leads to disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very interesting that they've allowed me in, but they're not allowed in. Does that suggest I'm a has-been and you're a threat? Well, they forced me into the pub, haven't they? Um, <laughs> I, I just find it astonishing that we've got you know, thousands of lobbyists and political representatives from all over the world, from the left and the right, allowed in to the secure zone in Manchester, uh, and one enfarage is considered to be a plague cow. Would you allow, I'm not saying you would ever want to, but would you have allowed David Cameron into your conference? Would you allow any Tory delegate who wanted to turn up into your conference? As a Tory, to well, come as a Tory well, and agitate? Well, 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 with, well, within reason, you know, if there were representatives of the Labour Party that wanted to come along to our conference, we'd be very happy to see them there. You know, we're open about this, but this is the whole management structure and style of Cameron. You know, he does his tour around the country, which he calls Cameron Direct, hand-picked audiences and pre-selected questions. Uh, I wouldn't say Alistair he picked it up from Blair, that'd be rude of me, wouldn't it? It would really be. <laughs> there might be a little bit of truth in it. <laughs> but there's so much stage management. In, in modern British politics. Yeah, I've, got to say, I've got to say, it's the flattest party conference. I mean, I've not been to a Tory conference for 10, 20 years. They did at least when Thatcher was around. They were quite. They could be quite lively. This mm. has been very, very flat. I'll give you that. Well, in those days, and I was a member of the Tory party yeah. in the 80s, in those days it was a party that believed in things and had passionate debates on where they were going policy-wise. At the moment, the Tory high command seemed to believe that getting the keys to the door of number 10 matters more than anything else. Uh, it's just, it's, it, there is a dearth of ideas on the centre-right of British politics, and, and, and that perhaps is part of the vacuum.